Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, Michael Webb here. I'm a software engineer at Neo4j working on the GraphQL team. And today I would like to talk to you about vector indexes and, of course, Gen AI and how that can work with GraphQL. So just a small run through of the agenda. First, I'd like to talk about vector indexes in GraphQL in a general sense, just to introduce the topic. Then I would like to talk about the vector directive, the at vector directive, which is what you use to actually make this work on GraphQL with us. Then I'll go through a little demonstration. And then finally, how you can take uh, steps from here and try it yourself. Okay, so vector indexing in GraphQL, a quick overview. Uh, vector indexing is a method of storing and searching through vector embeddings. What is a vector embedding? A vector embedding is a long list of floating point numbers. Here's a very small example on the screen at the moment. It's actually a lot shorter than the real, the real one. The real one is a 1,536 dimensions, which can be considered a small amount of dimensions, actually. So a vector is a, a long list of numbers. And vectors, uh, vector embeddings are commonly used to represent unstructured data like text and Im images. So why do we want to use vector indexing? Vector indexing helps us identify similarities, uh, which can be useful for things like finding related products, similar movies or documents. And that's, of course, useful for powering recommendation engines, useful for natural language processing and content retrieval. Uh, vectors are produced by, for example, text embedding models, which enables us to do similarity searches with the, uh, the results of the, uh, with the embedding models understanding. I'll go through that shortly a bit more. So what makes it useful in GraphQL specifically? Well, GraphQL has, uh, it's, it's very de developer friendly, has a declarative syntax, and it makes it easy to specify the exact data requirements uh, from the client side. And especially with GraphQL and Neo4j, it's nice and easy to traverse related entities. With strong typing, uh, with schema defined types, it's, uh, it ensures consistency with clear documentation of available clear, uh, queries. It simplifies the development process by embedding vector search capabilities into a familiar GraphQL schema. And of course, it exposes the powerful vector capabilities without the need to write custom cipher for every query yourself. That's the big, the big thing. What about Gen AI through Neo4j GraphQL? So we can be using the Gen AI plugin from Neo4j itself, it facilitates the embedding generation for us, the encoding of the vectors. Um, and we can then therefore query using natural language, like a phrase in English or a natural language phrase. Uh, and then we can search through the vectors in our database based on the response from a uh, generative AI API. So the vector directive, which is which has been introduced to the GraphQL library, let's have a little look at this. What it can do at the moment, it's a read-only uh, query, so it supports only read. You can't mutate with this, uh, but it can be configured in two different ways. First of all, you can pass a vector directly into the API, so the user would pass an API, uh, the vector themselves. They would have done the embedding generation themselves, or you can pass a query and then the embedding is done by the API in essence. And then uh, we would query using that. There are some prerequisites to use this, to using this though. The database must be Neo4j version 5.15 or higher because it's a relatively new feature. The node vector embeddings must already exist in the database because as I said, it's read only. Uh, that needs to be done outside of this directive. Uh, the vector index needs to be created manually, though we'd provide a, a way of asserting it exists when we have the server starting up. Uh, the embeddings must have been created using the same provider and model such that if we were using OpenAI to generate these embeddings, these vectors, then we must also use uh, OpenAI to do a query on them. Um, vector indexes cannot be performed across multiple labels. So if you have movies and actors, for example, you can't, uh, search across vectors that are on movies and actors. It'd have to be just movies or actors. And then queries by phrase require the credentials so we can actually connect to your API for the uh, LLM provider. And I just want to go through really quickly the documentation that we have available for this uh, from um, the Neo4j GraphQL documentation. 
So it's going to share this tab. So here we have a very uh, small, small snippet of a longer page, but it just showcases uh, the small necessary requirement required uh, changes to your Neo4j constructor, where we pass in, in this case, uh, the feature vector with open AI, a token, and then the uh, the model. Um, but I think it's going to be more interesting if I show this uh, a use case for this. So I'm just going to switch to my code, and we'll have a look at this in practice. Uh, one second, please. Okay, so we have, uh, I've got a repo here with an index uh, and a server. So it's a server with uh, the Neo4j GraphQL type definitions first, and then the usage of the uh, Neo4j driver. And then as described before, using um, Neo4j GraphQL to create this. So the type definitions we're using a the vector index directive, where I described the index that we're going to be used, uh, this relates directly to the index that already exists in the database. That was what I mentioned before about having the index already created. Um, we reference an embedding property. So this is a property on the node itself, which would contain the data uh, that has this long list of numbers. We specify the provider here. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using OpenAI. And then what's nice is we can specify a, a, a query name so the client themselves will be able to query with a, a meaningful query name. So in this case, search movies by plot. And other than that, we have movie with a title, actors, where actors is themselves a type that they have name. Uh, so that's just um, a, a very simple test uh, uh, schema here um, using the movie recommendations data set. Um, and then other than that, we're using Apollo server to run this. And I'll just want to show you how it can work. So I'm just going to start this now. So that's the client. This is the server. So I'm just going to start this up. OK, so uh, I just made a small demonstration of maybe a front end that you could have uh, working with this. And this is real time. And I'll say something like, I remember there was a a story where a toy uh, was replaced by a space toy or something like this. I can't really remember. Let's have a look. Right, OK, yeah, correct. It was Toy Story. That was the one I was thinking of. Um, and so we can see I've got uh, a, a couple of results here, four results. And we see the similarity score for each of these movies where we get the title as well. And that's reflected here in the query that I've, I've performed with search movies by plot as, as described in the server configuration, I pass in a, a phrase, which is the text I just typed in, and then we request the title and the score. So that's really cool. So that's nice. What about uh, traversing the results? So let's have a look again. Uh, I don't really remember what I typed. I think it was like a cowboy uh, toy was replaced or something like this. I don't remember. Uh, here we go, Toy Story, yep. Maybe the similarity score was a little bit better this time. I'm not sure. But here we can see that I've not only requested the title, but also the actors, their names. Uh, so here we see in the results, we have Don Rickles, Tim Allen, Tom Hanks, and Jim Barney, and so on and so forth for the other results as well. So they're, they're sorted by the similarity score at the moment. That's really cool. But what if we went uh, even more, one step further? OK. So um, space toy replaces cowboy toy, I think. Right, 94 was actually better this time. But in this case, uh, not only have I got the original movie node title, then I, I traverse across to the actors, I get their names. Then I'm going to go again back to the associated movies of those actors and get the title. So we can see that uh, we get a much uh, larger response with only a few extra pieces in, in the query. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm adding more as I go. But the point is, it's very simple to change this query and get the results you want. Uh, and we see uh, Tom Hanks has very many, uh, <laughs> many, many movies. Okay. 
Now it's going to show uh, the uh, last piece I want to share. How you can try it yourself. So uh, first of all, of course, you'll need to use the GraphQL library. Um, then uh, you'll need to have a database, the Neo4j data database with the Gen AA plugin enabled. If you use Neo4j Aura, which I recommend, this plugin is enabled by default, and that's what I used for this demonstration. Uh, and then uh, if you do uh, want to look a bit more into what different configurations are available for Gen AA in terms of the plugin and so forth, uh, and which we support in the GraphQL, um, the type definitions, the different uh, providers are available in this uh, documentation for Gen AI int integrations. And then uh, other than that, we have the uh, recommendations data set, which I use for this example. It's quite a large data set, and it's very interesting to look around that one. And finally, uh, I would recommend using a separate embeddings for this recommendation data set, though you can get the embeddings version from here it's probably better to do a separate embeddings and run those yourself. Um, and that's it. I hope that was interesting. I hope you have a, a look yourself and try it out and, and see if you enjoy it. Thank you very much. I hope there's uh, maybe some questions for me to answer.